Today, I'm going to teach you all about keying inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let's get started. This video is going to be the ultimate guide for anyone wanting to learn how to do green screens in DaVinci Resolve. Whether you're a beginner who knows nothing or a pro who just wants to level up their skills, this video has got something for you. We're going to start by talking about how to light the green screen as well as the subject and then dive into stuff inside of DaVinci Resolve for all the different keying tricks so that way you can deal with motion blur, you can deal with green on a shirt and all sorts of stuff like that. You're going to be learning a lot in this video. So let's get started. So for setting up your green screen, you're gonna want some sort of green surface to use uh, that we can then key out. So that could be a cloth in the background, it could be a wall that you painted, or it could be one of those you know foldable collapsible green screens that are really easy for transporting around. Now it's okay if there's some wrinkles in the green screen. We can key most of that out as long as it's you know close to the same value. What we don't want is like really dark black shadows on the green screen because that's a totally different color and DaVinci Resolve is not gonna know what to do with it. So it's gonna be a lot of extra work on us. It's also fine if the green screen is not taking up your entire shot or you have something coming in front of the green screen. The thing you want to make sure is that your subject does not put their hand past those objects because that means you're going to have to manually mask out that section. So try and keep the subject contained in front of the green screen the entire time. Now for lights, there's like two categories of lights to use. We have the lights that are lighting up the green screen itself, making sure that it's evenly lit. And then we have all the lights uh, making sure the subject is lit correctly. And this is where planning is so important. Just because you're filming on a green screen does not mean you get to ignore lighting. We still need to match the lighting in order to get a good result. So this video is brought to you by Amaran. They sent over two of their new 120C lights and these things are amazing. They're full RGB panel lights and they get they get really bright. But since they're a panel light, right out of the box, this will give us a nice even light that spreads across the green screen. And, and then on top of that, they come with these soft boxes so we can diffuse it even more. And one more important thing is that we also have this grid attachment on there. So what that means is when I have the light set up back here, it's not actually casting on me at all. If I took that off, we get a little bit of light spill on me, but I have to go all the way back here before that light starts casting on me. So that's something really important, so that way, especially in dark scenes, the lights on the subject are the only ones affecting it, so we can really control the lighting. Think of a shot like this. If light was blasting at me in every direction, this would not look right, but just having the one light in the background and a little bit of fill light makes it look really good. But anyways, all the lights I'm using are from Amaran. They're genuinely my favorite lights, and these new ones just take that to a whole new level. First off, like I said, these lights are insanely bright. The amount of light they put out is, is crazy. It also makes them just really easy to move around and transport, and they have this new like magnetic uh, quick release plate which is really nice because I can screw this onto the stand and once it's on the stand all I need to do is set the light on there get that lined up and then it snaps into place and it's totally solid now in addition to the really nice controls on the back and these are honestly some of the best controls on any light that I've used they also connect to the Amaran app which all of my lights connect to and that's really nice for a setup like this because I can have the camera set up I can be looking at my preview monitor and then I can adjust the lights to get them exactly how I want instead of having to stand here look at it then go change a light, then come back and preview it. I can just do it all standing right here. So if you want to check out the Amaran Panel 120C and the Panel 60C, click the link in the description below. I could not recommend them enough. So remember a few things here. Make sure not to get too far back so that way those lights spill on your subject. And then also make sure that the lights on your subject match the scene you're putting them in. For the camera settings, I would recommend filming at a high shutter speed so that way we don't have to deal with as much motion blur. If you've already filmed it, that's fine. We'll talk about some ways to avoid that. And if you film at a high shutter speed and still want motion blur, I'll talk about how you can add that in post and get it looking really nice. And before you tear it down, make sure to get yourself a clean plate. And I'm sure you've never used this for doing a green screen before, but it's going to make the job a lot easier and get us a better result in the end. Again, if you've already shot it and did not grab one, we'll talk about how to fix that in DaVinci Resolve. So once you get your footage imported into DaVinci Resolve, the first thing we want to do is set up some color management on the Fusion page. So I'm working with Sony's S-Log3, so right after my media in, I'm going to do shift space and add in the Cinean Log node. And the reason that we're doing all of this is so that way we can work in the linear color space, which if you don't know is how Fusion is meant to work. So we're going to get more accurate results in everything. In the inspector, I want this to be log to linear. I'm going to set the log type to be Sony's S-Log and then set the version to be S-Log3. When I view this, all the colors are going to be thrown totally off. So we're going to copy this, paste it, move it all the way to the end, and then set this to be linear back to log. So that way we'll output it back into Sony's S-Log3 so when we go to color grade it, it works as normal. And then as we're working inside of the linear system, we're going to come up to the viewer LUT and then turn this on to the gamut view LUT. And when, when you come to edit, you'll be able to set this to be Rec 709 scene. That way we can get a preview of what's going on, has some color, has some contrast, looks really good. If you're working with some Rec 709 footage like this green screen background thing that I have here that we're going to put behind me, uh, we can use the gamut node and when I view this, 
I want to set the source space to be Rec. 709 scene. And again, in the viewer, I'm going to turn on the gamut view LUT. All right, so that's all set up. Use the Cineon log node for log footage and the gamut node for everything else. So now that we have everything in the right color space, we want to import our clean plate. And in this case, I do not have one because I want to show you how to create one if you forgot to capture it. So if you already have one, just skip this step. But for those who don't, add in a clean plate node and then take the Cineon log and plug this into the clean plate. Now, if we view this node, we can take the background color picker and then just drop this on the green screen. And it does the reverse that a normal green screen effect would do. It's only gonna be showing us the color that we select. We'll come back and tweak some of these settings, but the ones you wanna pay attention to are, is this threshold, so that way we can bring more of the green screen into focus. And then we also have this erode. And what this is gonna do is just erode away some of those edges and kind of cut into the green screen. And this is actually what we wanna do. We wanna do a good amount of this because we're gonna come down to the bottom and set this to be fill. And actually, before I do that, if I grow these edges, you can see what it does is it extends uh, like a certain color into those transparent areas. And then doing fill just makes sure it does all of that um, so that way there's no transparency. So essentially what this node is doing is trying to erase everything that shouldn't be there and fake a clean plate. We'll come back to this and make some modifications in the future, but now we actually get to do the green screen effect. And a lot of the time, if you've done this before, you've been told to use the ultra gear. And this is a really good gear, but if you have a clean plate, you can get a lot better results using the Delta Keyer. So I'm gonna add in a Delta Keyer. And the big difference between these two nodes is the Delta Keyer allows for a clean plate. Pretty much everything else works the same. So for this, we're gonna take the Cineon Log node and plug this into the yellow background input. And then I'm gonna take the clean plate and then hold down Alt and drop it on the Delta Keyer and then select the clean plate input. And right away, you can see it's gonna give us a really good key. And when we're using a clean plate, if I come to the background color, this isn't gonna do anything because essentially what it's doing is a difference gear. It's looking at our main input and comparing that with a clean plate and anywhere that it has the same colors between them, it is just gonna delete that information. So inside of here, we can skip everything on honestly the first two tabs and we wanna jump right to this matte tab. And to see what's going on a little bit better because it can be kinda of hard to tell if you have a good key, we can come up to the view mode and change this to be status. And this is gonna show us like an alpha channel with everything exaggerated. So with this, we wanna grab the threshold low and then drag this until we no longer see uh, these little areas extending past our edges. So we'll clean that up a bit. And then we'll also do the same thing with the high so that way everything else is solid. And we're gonna miss a few spots like this green on my shirt. You can see that's gonna come through and there's not much we can do about that inside of this node. We'll talk about fixing that in just a minute. But you want to come through here and try and clean this up as much as you can uh, without eating into your subject and eroding that away. So in this case, since my green screen wasn't super evenly lit, I do have to you know shrink these values quite a bit. But if you have a really nice green screen, you're, you'll barely have to touch these. All right, let's set this view mode back to be final result. And we can come in here and start taking a look at our edges. So you can see it looks good on my shoulder, but up in my hair, it looks a little bit rough. So what we want to do is in these settings, we'll grab the blur and just add a very slight blur. We do not want to do too much because otherwise this makes it look, you can tell it's on a green screen very easy. And we can even come down and do the erode delete. So we can shrink some of this area around my ears so we don't have that like glowing highlight. And when I bring this down, you can see that's just going to kind of eat away. Again, you don't want to do too much because you know, like the, my ear looks totally off, even if something like my shoulder looks fine. So. Anytime you make one of these changes, go around to a few different spots on your image and make sure it all looks good. So you can see all of this is looking good. Uh, around my arm here, you can see this blur seems to be a little bit too much. So maybe we'll bring that down a little bit and then come back up here and check the hair. And this is looking like a really good key already. You can also play around with this clean foreground and clean background slider. You wanna be careful with these because it looks like everything is totally fine right here. But if I start moving through, you can see on a spot like this, if I bring up the clean background too much, it starts to eat away at my thumb. So don't bring this up too much and then also make sure you go through your entire clip to make sure something else later on isn't getting affected in a negative way because of that change. All right, this is a really good looking key that we have so far. If we zoom in, you can see there's some weird noise that is being applied. If we disable the Delta Cure, you can see like it's some sort of artifact that is appearing uh, on the side of my cheek. And that has to do with the replace mode. So right now it's just setting it to be soft color. If we set this to be source, what it's gonna do is not try and do any correction to the skin to remove green or anything like that. And that's gonna give us a lot more of a smooth result. And in this case, since I set up my green screen correct, where I was far enough away from the background, there's not too much green spill coming onto me. 
but inside of the delta here, underneath the fringe tab, we have the spill method. And what you wanna do if you're seeing a really obvious green cast coming on your subject, change this to be something like medium or well done. And in this case, it's extremely subtle, but you can see a little bit of this green disappearing. Now setting it to be burnt is not what you want. That's always gonna you know, make it look like you have a terrible sunburn. <laughs> so we're just gonna leave this on well done. The other nice thing to know on this tab is the fringe gamma. So if we zoom into one of the edges and bring this down, you can see it's either gonna darken that if we bring it down or it's gonna brighten it if we bring it up. So depending on your background, you might need to play around with this just to get it to blend in a little bit nicer. In this case, I'm gonna leave it just slightly darker. All right, this is looking really good, but we need to make some corrections right away. And the first one is to take off this light and then everything that was outside of the green screen. I'm gonna grab a B spline and then just roughly uh, trace out the, all this information on the side and make sure that you know, when I close these points, this doesn't accidentally, you know, stay on the screen. So we want all of this to be contained by this B spline. Then what I can do is hold down Alt and drop this on the Delta gear, and then put this into the garbage mat. And in the Delta gear, right away, it's gonna do the right thing since we selected that, it's gonna delete it, now it looks great. The last thing is I need to make sure that this green on my shirt is gonna stay visible. So what we need to do is tell Fusion, don't do any of the keying inside of this region. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna add in a tracker node, so that way I can just you know track my movement, so that way I don't have to manually mask that out. And I'm gonna use the new IntelliTrack, put this right up here on my neck. The reason I'm doing it there is because my hands cover my shirt, so it, it'll get all messed up. And then set the adaptive mode to be best match and bring down the match tolerance, and then press track. I like using those settings, I tend to get better results with them, though with the IntelliTracker, it, it works pretty good almost every time. Okay, so now that I have a track, what I'm gonna do is add in a ellipse mask and then plug this into the tracker node. And inside of the tracker, I can set the operation to be match move, so that way it follows its position. And then set the emerge to be foreground only, so it's only gonna be showing me the mask. Now viewing the delta here, what I'm gonna do is take the tracker and put this into the effect mask input. And the reason I'm doing an effect mask instead of a solid mat is because with the effect mask, it's not gonna let the node do anything, so it's not gonna try and remove some of the green on the shirt or any of that. So just use the effect mask for stuff like this. And then all the way on the side, I have to press this arrow, come to the settings tab. I wanna apply this mask inverted. So that way anywhere inside of the mask is not going to be affected by the key. So I'll just shrink this down, place it right over my shirt and then shrink this in. And I also wanna add a little bit of a soft edge just in case anything starts to poke through. But I wanna be careful not to bring this up too much because it'll start to give a green halo around, around myself. All right, but just like that, I can see the green on my shirt, even though I'm doing a green screen effect. It's a pretty easy fix, especially when you can get a good track like I did. So looking at this footage, you can see when I wave my hand pretty quick, there's a little bit of motion blur. So what you can do is inside of the Delta here, again, just start cranking some of these settings to try and cut that away, but you're never gonna get that perfect. And if we add motion blur in in post, it's actually gonna fix this and make it look a little bit better. So let's come up to my media pool, grab in this green screen footage, and if I view this off to the side, the nice thing about this render is that I included the optical flow pass, all the vector information that we need. And this looks crazy, but don't worry, Fusion can understand it totally fine. The reason I rendered it out is because optical flow can be really slow, and for the sake of this tutorial, I don't want it to take a few seconds to render every single frame. How you would set it up is adding in a optical flow node, taking the output of Cydian Log, and now it is generating all of that information. So what we want to do is grab a vector motion blur and taking this node, I'm going to take our delta gear, plug this into the input so that way it's running through and then take our vectors either from uh, my, my render pass that I have here or the optical flow and plug this into the vectors channel on the motion blur. I'm going to get rid of the optical flow node, but right away you can see we're adding in some motion blur to our image. Now this is something that is not always going to be perfect. As you can see, my fingers are kind of, you know, poking through there. They're not getting all of the right motion blur. And when you actually have the optical flow node, you can change some of its quality settings to try and get it to pass through there. But in the fast motion, it's gonna look totally fine and just adding that little bit of extra motion blur is gonna look really good. All right, and now that we have all of that set up, we can start compositing this over our background. So I'm gonna break this input, drag this stuff up, and then combine this over our background. So I'm gonna merge those two up, flip those inputs with Control T and view this off to the side. So already this is looking really good. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve 20, you can use another trick in this section. So if I connect this into my Cineon Log to output it, with the Media Out node selected, if I view this off to the side, turn off my view LUT, 
I can set the color grade to be color, and it's gonna show me what all of this looks like when I put it through my out edit page color grading. This makes it really easy to fine tune all the settings so that way you know exactly what it's gonna look like in the end. So I'm gonna come after this vector motion blur, add in a color corrector node, and there's a few main things that I wanna do in this. I first wanna drop the saturation down a bunch because there's no saturation in space. And then I also wanna bring the gain down so that way I'm not quite as bright. Now, if I view this merge node off to the side, what I wanna do is right click, come to views, and then set this to be the waveform. And this shows us the, the brightness of all of the values across the screen. The thing that I wanna make sure of in this node is that I'm not pushing some of the values too far in relation to the background image, because all of that needs to match in order for it to sell the green screen effect. So if I grab my lift and drag this down, and I actually need to come up here and go to options and pre-divide, post multiply this, you can see this looks wrong because the subject that we're compositing over the background has way lower black values than everything else. So what we're gonna do is zoom in here and then we're just gonna bring up the lift value until these black values match that background image. So we'll set that right there and you can see right away that looks way better than it originally did. Same thing for the brightness. You don't want this gain to be way above everything else because that doesn't look right. So we're gonna bring this down somewhere in the middle and then this one's a lot more you know, subjective. Like we can, we can play with this to see what looks good. All right, and the other thing, we wanna come over to the master and add just a little bit of a bluish tint. And we can actually make this a little bit more specific and coming to the range, setting this to be shadows, and we can add in that blue tint only to the shadows. So we'll drag this up. We don't want it to be crazy intense, but we do want some nice blue. All right, and that's looking pretty good. And a way we can sell this even more is adding in some light wrap around my shoulder in this bright area. So the best way to do that is to add in a luma keyer, and then we wanna take the output of the background and plug this into this node. And if I view this off on the left, we wanna set the views back to be 2D viewer, so that way we can see what this is doing. And it's only selecting the bright areas in the image, and we can use these low high values to change the threshold for that. All right, then we're gonna take the output of the color corrector and then plug this into the garbage mat. And what that's gonna do is cut out our subject. So we can add in a blur after that, plug the color corrector into the blur, and then viewing this node, we wanna set apply mask inverted. And then in this node, we wanna multiply by mask and come to the controls. And when I bring up the blur size, you can see it's just gonna add in a slight halo around our subject. So if I merge this blur after the color corrector, I can come to the apply mode, set this to be screen. And now just using this blur slider, we can change the amount of light wrap. So typically I do two passes of light wrap. The first one is gonna be super, super subtle and then I wanna bring the blend value down so it's not quite as intense. And then when I'm done with that and happy with how that looks, I'll copy the blur and the merge, paste this over here and merge this back up. And then the output of the color corrector into the blur as well. And in this one, I'll bring up the blur size and then bring down the blend even more just to add a bit more of a halo coming onto the subject. Now, as one final thing to touch up, you can see on my thumb, there's a bit of a dark outline around my thumb. So if we come back to the delta here and under fringe, that's where this fringe gamma comes in. So if I reset that back to the default, that's actually gonna look really good in the scene, not pushing that darker or making it brighter. And I'll zoom out and make sure that didn't affect any of the other areas of our image negatively. And you know, this looks really, really good right now. Although it looks like at the front here, our mask is poking through. So we need to drag this up and make it just a little bit taller so that way it is only showing us the green. So that is the best way to get a good green screen in DaVinci Resolve, using a clean plate to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Again, big thanks to Amaran for sending over those lights. I've been using them for a few weeks now and they are absolutely amazing. They were gonna replace a few lights in my toolkit. If you guys wanna learn some more really nice compositing tips, check out my Iron Man HUD video that I did a few months ago. That has a ton of cool stuff, especially related to tracking an image. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll see you in the next video.